It's my pleasure now to make some introductions of the executive leadership team for Blue Stakes. Here they're listed on the screen. Paul Huntsman is with us today. He's the president of Blue Stakes. Jeanette Diedrich, she's back at the office. Laura Raven, she was out at the registration table. David Bell, he's at the back um, recording today with one of his employees, um, Dan, and myself. Also, I'd like to recognize Sherry Miller. She is with our um, member service member services management team, and she was out at the table as well. We are a nonprofit organization. We're governed by a board of directors, and here are the classifications of those uh, companies and the individuals. Their names are up on our website. And with us today, we have the chairman of the board, um, Kyle Kalin, and Kyle is over here in the left. He is with Lumen Technologies, formerly CenturyLink, and we appreciate Kyle being here. He has a wealth of knowledge as well, 40 plus years. So again, if you've got any questions, visit with any of these exhibitors around the room. You know, back at, uh, for, I failed to mention that we have, depending upon the time of year, 20 to 24 CSRs, customer service representatives. They are on the other end of 811, helping you articulate what you would like to get down on paper so that the locators and the operators who locate their own so that they come out and mark the correct location. Again, we're gonna talk about a lot of processes and state laws as I proceed forward today. I mentioned we're a nonprofit organization. We are not state funded. We are funded by the 648 owner operators throughout the state of Utah. A lot of people think that we have something to do with the state as far as funding and we do not. It's hard for me to imagine that there are 600 plus owner operators of underground utilities in our state. And it is a state law. If an operator has utilities underground, they will become a member of the association. And so we don't have 100%. This is really, really close, 99 point whatever percent. But there's a few second irrigation, um, secondary water irrigation companies in rural areas that are not participating and they should be. So we, uh, we take the soft approach and we send them information as we learn about them. I like to cover our mission statement. It is certainly threefold, to promote public safety, to protect the underground utilities and minimize service interruptions. And we do that primarily twofold by providing damage prevention education such as we're doing here today, as well as processing accurate locate requests. Know what's below, call 811, or certainly contact Blue Stakes online before you dig. There's our web address, bluestakes.org. We also have a great, very user-friendly app, and we'll talk about that more as we move forward. I would like to now show another short video, the Digging Dangers 29 series. So Blue Stakes, we're certainly one of the sponsors of the Digging Dangers series, as well as a lot of operators throughout the country and a lot of other um, notification centers such as Blue Stakes. Watch for the Utah damage here. Well, as a driller, it's really your unlucky day when you hit an underground electric line, which then ends up causing a gas leak that catches on fire. This type of digging accident reminds us that despite our best efforts, damages still happen. And fortunately, almost all of them result in no injuries and in no destruction to property. But that wasn't the case when a worker operating a jackhammer struck an 11,000 volt cable. Resulting injuries had him airlifted from the construction scene, hospitalized, with serious burns throughout his body. Courts closed, the 911 call center was disrupted and relocated to an outdoor trailer, and prisoners were transported to another facility when a crew ran into trouble working on the building's water supply. While excavating to do their work, the workers discovered the water line was buried in concrete. When they came in to break up the concrete, we at that time hit a electrical line that was laying on top of the water line, which uh, was a main circuit going into the building. 
Major downtown power outage trapped people in elevators and shut down businesses on a busy Friday, as onlookers described a strong burnt smell in the air and smoke coming up from manhole covers. According to reports, a subcontractor working on a project to improve downtown cell service drilled through a buried power cable, causing an underground fire and the resulting outage. We've seen many broken water mains over the years due to excavation damage. Usually what comes to mind is flooded basements, submerged cars, traffic issues, and repair costs. But we don't often consider the potential for personal harm. A one-call ticket was made, lines were marked, but an excavator still somehow damaged this major water supply line. Water gushed out of the excavation and into a nearby residential area. A woman went to check her basement for leaks, when the water burst through a basement window, sending water and glass flying. She needed stitches due to her injuries, and other basements in the neighborhood were also flooded. We're all familiar with the dangers of hitting an electric line or a gas line. But many times we don't think of a sewer line as being in that sort of category. An incident in Dallas showed that a damage on a sewer pipe, no matter the cause, can have fatal consequences. Within the sewer line is hydrogen sulfide, four times more lethal than carbon monoxide. When working in a trench 20 to 30 foot deep, as these workers were, the air circulation isn't there. In this tragic accident that killed one worker, and sent two to the hospital, we're reminded that hydrogen sulfide's effects are irreversible. You know, incidents, accidents, and unfortunate deaths occur way more often than you could ever imagine. I have the fortunate opportunity to collaborate with approximately 22 other nonprofit notification centers throughout the country. We get together on a quarterly basis. Uh, we're finally starting to come back to quarterly basis. In a couple of weeks, I'll be with that group. And again, we share incidents, accidents, news footage, um, training videos, and presentations. We pledgeize from each other, which is okay in our industry. We are all about the same message, and that is awareness and damage prevention and safety. So again, it's a great group to be able to participate with. Everything that we do at Blue Stakes is certainly to promote public safety around the underground utility lines. I'm sure that all of you here know that it's a free service, but more importantly, it's a state law as well. State law indicates that if you are displacing the earth, simply putting a shovel in the ground, did you not displace the earth, that you should have a one call notification ticket. So keep that in mind again rolling it up to yourselves as potential homeowners um, for the spring and summer that hope you know is around the corner um, any project that you're doing digging please please notify us again web-based applications very easy very user friendly and easy to navigate and i'll share some of that with you as we move forward some of the incredible numbers that you all throughout our state have been uh, providing for us all right get your clickers ready I'm going to go through some state law questions, some processes, and hopefully this will heighten your awareness, not only about safety, but about items that we at Blue Stakes uh, provide for you, tools in your, in your pouch, so to speak. I like to do what's called the pre and post assessment. So again, if you heard um, what I was saying before the meeting even started about looking at that looping slideshow. Um, this will help you as we go through some of these questions. You will know a lot of these answers. Here we go with the first question. And be fast on the clicker and I will move fast as well. The state law requires anyone who is digging to contact Blue Stakes to submit a locate request. True or false, number one or two, A or B. Boy, they came in extremely fast. Polling is closed, 99%. Who's that 1%? I'm just kidding, I don't know who you are. All right, well done, that is true. And I just gave the answer way before I threw this question up there. Remember, if you're displacing the earth, if you're putting a shovel in the ground. Trivia question coming up. What year was Blue Stakes established? 
you can read those A through F. Again, the answer popped up, some subliminal messages on that looping slideshow. Response is coming in a little slower. You're thinking about it. We've been around for a number of years. I'll close polling as soon as I get some more responses. Again, remember last question, the just under, there we go. There I got them. Thank you. All right, 56% of you are correct. 1974, so we've been around for 48 years. I hope to be here in two years with you when we celebrate the big 5-0 for blue stakes. Next question, who can enforce the blue stake laws in Utah by pursuing civil penalties? The operator, the excavator, the attorney general, or all of the above? Now, the book that I left with you today, The Excavator's Guide, starting on page 65 is the enforcement section, and that goes through page 67, and it talks about all of this. I'm not going to have you open the books. Some years we've done that, and that takes a little bit longer for us, but again, I'll try and point out some pages that the questions are referenced to. Polling is closed, and 47% of you are correct. It is all of the above. Now, I'm going to talk about a process. This is an alternate method by which blue stakes, we provided the tool, so to speak, that you can do arbitration. So when incidents and accidents happen, frequently, immediately, parties come together and start butting heads and they say, we'll see you in court. Well, now you have an alternate method to hopefully solve those issues outside of court. You would go to our website, you would click on the resources, you would drop down to arbitration slash damage prevention, excuse me, damage dispute board. You would click on that and this screen would come up. You would fill in these few required steps and when you hit submit at the bottom, this form goes directly to the PSC or the Public Service Commission. It does not come, come to blue stakes. They will accept that form as a starting point that you would like to, to arbitrate and see if you can work out the differences with the parties involved. All right, one process there. Next question. Damage prevention is a shared responsibility, true or false? Or are you watching the looping screen coming up? What does your gut tell you on this question? What's the answer? Looking for a few more responses here. Thank you, polling is closed. 99% of you, so close. Come on, we need some hundreds. Here we go. All right. What are the new Blue Stake Notification Center hours? I gave that away earlier today. Again, the new hours started on December 1st last year. So coming up on two months ago, no, we're, we're into February. Coming up on three months ago, the new hours started. And again, this has proved to be very, very successful, not only for the employees at Blue Stakes, but for the operators, again, it's the contractors, the excavators, all of you, the professionals, it's working really, really well. Polling is closed. 50% of you, you are correct. Again, if you've tried any of our online applications, right at the top, when you go on, either on our website or our app, right at the top, it says our new hours. So again, just heightening your awareness. We are open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, no weekends, we're closed Saturday, Sunday, and legal holidays. Next question, so kind of think through this. This uh, question coming up, submitting an online locate request is available 24 by seven at bluestakes.org. Is that true or false? Number one or two, A or B? There, you've got the majority, thank you very much. And 94% of you, you are correct. Now, once you submit your ticket, yes, it goes through a screening process. Uh, some flow through, and then if there's issues or questions, our CSRs will be contacting you, our web team. Next question coming up. On average, it takes how long to create an online locate request? You can read the times there. I had our IT team do a random sampling of several thousand notifications. And again, yes, some are difficult and we know that, but on average, once you get used to our website and the app, submitting your own online locate request is 
relatively quick. What do you think the answer is to that? And I almost gave it away there. We'll close the polling and it is really quick. Okay, so 39% of you are correct. It takes one to two minutes to submit a locate request online. And again, as we proceed forward, I'm gonna share some massive numbers with you, thanks to all of you in our great state. How soon before digging do you need to create a locate request? Ticket and locate request are you synonymous. 12, 24, 36, 48 hours or two full business days prior to digging? What's the correct answer per the state law? Questions, answers came in very quick there, thank you. And 93% of you are correct. It is 48 hours or two full business days prior to digging. What is the life of a locate request or a ticket? How long is it valid for? 10 business days, 14 business days, 10 calendar days, or 14 calendar days, or until the job is done. I suspect you, the majority of you will have the correct answer here. You're the experts in the field. Polling is going to close in three, two, one. I got most of you, closed it a little quick. 64% of you are correct. It is 14 calendar days. I'm a very visual person. I learned visually. I suspect some of you are that way as well. Go with me on this hypothetical and visual example. Say you created your ticket where the Blue Stakes logo is on Monday the 8th at 9.02 a.m. You are legal and valid to dig on Wednesday the 10th at 9.02 a.m barring any unforeseen circumstances. And there are some cases that come up. We won't get into that right now. Your ticket is valid for the 14 calendar days. It expires on Monday, the 22nd at 9.02 a.m. Not 9.03 or four, these are legal documents. In this example, it expires at 9.02 a.m. on Monday, the 22nd. What ticket type extends the life of a locate request? If your job is going to last longer than that 14 calendar days, what do you do? A remark, an update, a second notice, or a retransmit? And again, the majority of you are gonna know this because you're the experts out there and you know what you've gotta do to be able to continue your digging project. Let's see how you did. 78% of you are correct. It is an update. So here's the visual, the exact same scenario per the state law, you need to do your updated ticket two full business days prior to your original ticket expiration date and time. So in this example, you need to do it no later than Thursday the 18th at 9.02. So don't roll the dice and gamble at 9.01 trying to hit submit because you may miss that 9.02. And if it registers at 9.03, you're out of compliance. So again, the state law indicates where you can see the red arrow here that you can do it up to six calendar days. So you could go back to the 16th to do your updated ticket. And again, what's interesting to note is your updated ticket does not start until your original ticket expires if you've done your due diligence. So assuming that you have, your new updated ticket will start on Monday the 22nd at 9.02, and now you're in total compliance. Now you have a true 14 calendar days to continue excavation because you've given the, you've followed the law, done your due diligence, you've given the operators and the locating companies coming come out in enough time to freshen up their marks. Continue to update your tickets until your job is done. And then please cease the updating. It's a waste of time at that point in time for the operators, the locators, uh, very um, ineffective use of money and resources. All right, here's another question that hopefully you saw the answer to earlier today. Private lines will not be marked when you create a locate request with blue stakes. Is that true or false? When I travel around the state and do my one hour safety meetings, I get a lot of questions on private lines. We're gonna drill down on that, hopefully heighten your awareness about private lines. 
I'll give it just a few seconds here for a few more responses. We actually take this data back and we learn from it. We try to uh, enhance our presentations. And again, we're, we're very narrow in scope of what Blue Stakes does. So we always have a need to cover the state law and some processes. Polling is closed. 84% of you are correct. Private lines will not be marked when you create a ticket with Blue Stakes. So let's talk about private and public. Look at this massive power box. Look at the conduits coming out of the bottom of this box. I took this picture. If this was in the scope of your digging project, my goodness, would it just not take hours, it seems like, a long time for these operators and locators to locate every one of those um, cables that are in those conduits going under underground. Absolutely it would. All right, so here's an example, rolling it up to a private residence, or you can certainly think about a commercial building. Look at the blue line. We all know what blue is for, and that's potable water. Somewhere there is a water meter, and I put it just inside of the property, back of the sidewalk. Then it goes into a dotted line. Now, just back of the sidewalk, there is a meter or into the property somewhere, okay? So that would still be a solid line up to the meter. On the flip side of the meter going to the home or the business, that is a private line. That will not be marked when you create a locate request. Look at the green dotted line. We all know what green is. That's sewer, right? The sewer comes clear out to the main. That is a private line and will not be located. Now look at the yellow solid line. We all know that yellow is gas. Obviously, there's a gas meter on this residence or on the commercial property and somehow there is a dotted yellow line feeding the gas heater for the pool that is a private line excuse me look at the red okay power right we know that there's a power meter on the building or on the home then if you look at the shed the detached shed dotted line that is a private line that will not be marked how do you get your private lines marked we're gonna talk about that briefly, momentarily. Here's a picture I took, a commercial building, a lot of conduits. What are in those conduits? No idea, could there be fiber optic cables feeding an adjacent building on this massive commercial property? Absolutely, could there be power feeding a water feature or a marquee of, of telling you what this building or whole property is? You bet, so those are all private lines as well. Look here at this residential on the side. You see a couple of gray boxes there. Those are called network interface boxes. You, you can see the power meter. What I wanna point out here is on the right-hand side of the power meter, there is a three-quarter inch conduit coming down. That is a private line. Again, that's feeding either a water feature or a detached structure or something out in the yard. All right, so how would you get your private lines marked? You would go to our homepage bluestakes.org, you would go along the top, we have a lot of drop downs, you would go to FAQ, frequently asked questions. We have a total of 20 questions, a lot of questions that have come in over the years that we've answered from uh, professionals as well as homeowners and we put the answers to those. But what we're talking about is private lines. So you would go to question number six. There are the companies that I know of that do locating in our great state. You could contact them, say, hey, I have some private lines that I need located. How much? People ask me, well, how much is it? I don't have any idea. I'm not the company. I'm sure they're all different um, prices. Today, we have a couple of companies with us, ELM as well as USIC, and I don't think I missed other locating companies. Nope. Anyway, so you can talk to those individuals as well. Another process that frequently I get asked the question to in my one uh, hour safety meetings, Blue Stakes does not accept a ticket for planning and design, and that is correct. They said, well, what do we do? Well, now I'm gonna show you the process for emergency after hours and planning and design. And again, I've had a few people, we're on our 21st meeting today, we started the 3rd of January with the pipeline, their meetings and with ours, 21st meeting. And I've had a few, a handful of people say, this was really informative. It's gonna help us as we move forward. Here we go. You pull up our website, you go to members, you click on the very first drop down there, utility contact information lookup. You click on that, and this is just the top portion of that form. Again, it's a great big long legal form. 
the verbiage in there, you can read through that and it talks about the, the hours and whatnot, eight to four for the, but you fill in the pertinent information. You fill in the county, the place, the address. This happens to be the address of the Blue Stakes um, office building up in Draper, Utah. When you click find street down at the bottom here, this screen will come up. Your lats and longs will be populated up there at the top and there is a buffer zone. In this case, a 200 foot buffer zone around the Blue Stakes office. It will list, so now you've got your facility identified there, your building. Then if you come down to the bottom, you'll see it says after hours, emergency or planning and design. So let's move that up to the top of the screen now. Now, depending on if you're looking for, respectively, in this example, it's emergencies that we're going to click on, it will populate the screen. You can put in your email address. It will send you all of this information via email. Here is an exploded view of the emergency contact information in this example. So all of these companies listed with their 7x24 emergency contact number are listed here. You need to call those companies and say, we're on an emergency, emergency dig, maybe for a water line or whatever, because it's below zero. Um, we've got a frozen pipe. You need to contact these numbers or have somebody in your office or in the truck or whatever, start calling them. Hey, we need to dig out here. Do you guys want to come out? You're in the scope of our digging project and protect your facilities. A shortcut to this form is UCL, utilitycontactlookup.bluestakes.org pretty easy, right? Pretty smart of our IT department, ucl.bluestakes.org. All right, another, again, another process there. And obviously, if it was for planning, planning and design, that would be a whole different list of phone numbers. You would click that and call them. Hey, we're getting ready to erect a building or a hotel or whatever out here. Um, help us through this. All right, next question. If you notify Blue Stakes to have your underground utility lines marked, the chance of damage is less than what percent? Now this is actually a national statistic. So nationwide, what do you think the percentage is? One, three, five, seven, or nine. Remember you can change your answer if you think, or your neighbor knew the correct answer. And I gave this, I gave the answer to this question away on our slides. I'm giving it just a minute for a few more responses, please. Coming in a little slow on this, you're thinking through it, that's good. Polling is closed and 61% of you are correct. It is less than a 1% chance of damage occurring if you have contacted the statewide one call notification center throughout the country. Okay, with that being said, here are some alarming statistics from our largest service provider in the state of Utah. Dominion Energy is in 27 of 29 counties. Here is a 10 year snapshot of their percentages of damages due to no locate or no notification to blue stakes. Now, let me give you an example. We'll just go with the last year, 2021. They had 1,363 total damages of which 431 or 32% no contact to blue stakes you can see what's happened over the last 10 years. And it actually, I just kind of keep a 10 year rolling snapshot, but it was even prior to that. So they're way, way, way out of sorts. We have plenty of room for improvement, right? To kind of catch up to the national statistic, less than 1%. Now a good portion of those 431 damages, you're rolling the dice, you're taking your life in your own hands. You've seen damages, you've seen photos, you've seen, heard the other presenters talk about it. Um, natural gas, you know, it's not poisonous, but it'll displace the air. You've heard of, heard the presenters talk about that. So again, be safe out there with this natural gas. The DIRT acronym stands for the Damage Information Reporting Tool. This is a web-based application that the CGA or Common Ground Alliance host, and they are in the country capturing the data from all of us throughout the country of root cause analysis and near misses. They will not issue a fine or a penalty or anything like that. They are strictly capturing data. So we would encourage you to go and support the CGA, their DIRT report, 
and the way that you would get to Dirt Report, a couple of ways, you could go to Blue Stakes website underneath resources, there's a drop down and it says Dirt. And you could click on that and that will take you out to the Common Ground Alliance or CGA's website. And then you could subscribe and then you put in again your root cause analysis or your near misses. It helps all of us learn from other people's mistakes. Now here's a screenshot, just one, and it's there's many, many out there from the DIRT report. But you can see nationally, no locate requests are very much in sync, not a good in sync, but they're in sync with where Dominion Energy is running year after year after year, 32%. Locating practices, 32%. Excavation practices, 30%. There's a plethora of data on the DIRT report. It's out on their website. Moving on, the CGA, they also produce and provide the best practices book. Some of you, my table was on the left as you walked through the door or my right back in this far corner when you came in today. I have several of these spiral bound um, hard copies for you, for you to take back to your offices today. I would encourage you to pick those up. It is also a free download at Common Ground Alliance, and you can see there particular chapters that might be of interest to this group. Chapters two, four, five, and six, planning and design, locating, excavating, and mapping. But again, a, a wealth of information in there. And again, they provide this on an annual basis. And we purchase these and we want these out in everyone's hand, or at least in your offices. Again, please pick those up. We must remain vigilant and resist temptation to cut corners. You've heard our previous three presenters talk about this. Again, this is an incident, accident, and unfortunate two deaths that occurred in Utah County a number of years ago. Some of you will remember this out in Saratoga Springs. I'm going to paraphrase. I heard an attorney from uh, back then, it was uh, Questar Gas, speak for about an hour and a half on this one incident, accident, and death. But again, a very 30,000 foot high level overview. Contractor was out in the park strip, digging, did not have a locate request with blue stakes. Totally out of compliance, tore into the gas line, broke the gas line, gas was blowing. No friction spark, gas was blowing, right? Crew came out from Questar back then, Dominion now, repaired the main line out there in the park strip. Gas migrated through the path of least resistance. Another crew came out, another technician, inside tech, he went in to reestablish service to the water heater and the furnace. The homeowner, let me take you in, let me show you where my furnace room is. Long story short, lit the lighter and you can see the devastation and two of them lost their lives that day because of a shortcut, because of failure the contractor didn't get hurt. Contractor was out of business, but again, caused two, two lives to what, end quickly. Okay, next question. What is the tolerance zone or safety zone used synonymously there on either side of the mark? So once you've created the ticket, once it's gone to the operators and the locating companies, once the paint and the flags are, are down, there is a safety zone per the Utah state law. What is that? 18, 24, 30, 36, or 48 inches. You're the professionals. I know you know the correct answer to this. And if not, we're heightening your awareness because there are a lot of first time attendees. There's new and upcoming generations. We encourage you to teach your kids and your grandkids about the color code, about safe digging practices. Pulling is closed, let's see how you did. 92% of you, spot on 24 inches on either side of the marks i gave that question the answer check this out if anybody does have to leave please make sure that your clickers are left on your table or left at the registration table if you do have to leave here we go 24 inches i gave that picture away just heightening your awareness a subliminal message safety zone in utah's 24 inches i took this picture on the right up there again a massive communications duct structure you can see there's running lines and then diamonds or, or lines, hash marks between. Then there's another line, a running line on the right side of that duct structure. Down at the bottom, this hieroglyphics, this extra paint says FO. We all know what FO means, right? Fiber optics, that's correct. 
Okay, now on the right side of that, you see another gas line. And then in the, in the back, in the top of the picture, a high pressure gas line, you see where the asphalt's been cut out before. Massive amounts of, of facilities out there. Again, keep in mind that that safety zone is going to be wider and wider and wider as those lines, as that two foot safety zone intersects e each other. The yellow line, if you do two feet on the left of the yellow line and two feet on the far right of the furthest communication line, those intersect each other. So now your safety zone starts two feet on the outside of the yellow and two feet on the outside of the furthest orange. So you've got this massive wide safety zone. Keep that in mind. The state law indicates that if you are digging within the safety zone, there are four approved methods by which you need to adhere to. Hand shovel, hand digging, vacuum excavation, potholing, or an air knife. You've got to get down there. We know that sometimes you're the professionals. You've got to be within that safety zone. Again, Dave already talked about it on real high pressure, but if it's massive amounts of structure, it might be uh, to your advantage to have a watch dog or a mark and standby person from the utility owners or the locating companies, just helping you um, be safe. Next question, what's the easiest way for an excavator to check the status of a locate request? I've been very impressed how high the um, correct answer on this one is. Call 811 and ask CSRs, customer service representatives, check for the marks at the job site, check for EPR or electronic positive response at bluestakes.org or contact member facility owners. Again, a lot of you are utilizing this process. We'll go ahead and close polling in just a couple of seconds and see how you did. Outstanding, the majority of you are correct, 50% of you. It is check for electronic positive response at bluestakes.org. Now, as some of you know, when you created a notification, a ticket, and you receive that email back to you, down at the bottom there is a button or a hot link or whatever you want to call it that will take you right to EPR and it will show you at that point in time um, who has responded. Now it's not a state law that all operators have to participate in this at this point in time. Sometime, um, and obviously up here on the hill it's not, uh, it's not a bill or a proposed bill at this point in time, but sometime we suspect that it will be a state law that every operator participates in electronic positive response. But a good portion of our high volume users, um, Dominion being one of the extreme high volume users, they are utilizing it. So keep that in mind. Now there's a manual way to get to that if you need, and I'll just briefly show you that. You go to our website, you click on locate requests. Again, a lot of information under locate requests. You can create tickets, you can do your updates, so on and so forth. But you scroll all the way to the bottom. EPR, electronic positive response. You click that, it takes you over to number three and it brings you up this manual page. You type in your ticket number manually up there where the arrow is and hit submit and the rest of this will populate. You can also downlist a list of the EPR codes. Next question. What is the benefit for facility owners to participate in electronic positive response? closes the communication gap between the facility owner and excavator, facilitates communication process, reduces second notices and unneeded ticket revisions or all of the above. We are actually ahead of schedule. We're doing well here today. Okay, polling is closed and 94% of you, outstanding. It is all of the above. Again, here's just some information for our um, facility owners, the operators. You do have to have a ticket management system, so on and so forth. I won't delve too deep into that. And then once you get your credentials through our member services department, then you would have access into here. And again, this is only for the operators. All right, let's talk about the handouts that I left with you on your table today. First off, this is an updated version of the excavator's guide. It was updated October 20. You can look on the front page cover and in the black border there with the white lettering, it says October of 2020, that's when it was updated. If you have an old excavator's guide, please discard it and take this new one with you. There are several additional handouts on tables. If there's a colleague or someone that you would like to take um, a group of handouts to, please feel free to gather these up as well. 
the first third of the book, process guidelines of what you need to know and do prior to creating a ticket online or calling us. The center section of the book are marking guidelines, how the operators and how the locating companies should be identifying those facilities. And the latter portion, starting on page 47, is a reproduction of the Utah state law. There has been some verbiage added at the end of that. Um, again, pertinent information. I also left with you the color code, handy reference. Perhaps not all of you are aware of every color identifying all types of utilities. Now you have that quick reference. It is also on the back page of your excavator's guide. The flip side of that little card are the five steps to safer digging. I also left with you a business card. It has a QR code. If you hover over that, it will take you directly to our app, whether you are Apple or an Android user. Excuse me. I left with you an excavator safety magazine and directory. Please take those, some great articles in there. And here you will see our new updated six inch sticker. We have added to the beginning of it, click, click or call. Certainly the click is for our web-based applications. Click or call 811 before you dig. Safe digging partner, how do you become a safe digging partner? We truly feel that that is by adhering and following the Utah state law, doing what you know you should do and always contact 811 in the middle. That is a national registered trademark that the CGA produced and provided to all of us throughout the country to utilize. We just have to follow their color codes and different things. Life doesn't have a reset. You know, Dave talked about this. There is a consequence in all choices, consequence whether good or bad, as we reflect upon that. Think about perhaps the shortcuts that you've taken in your lifetime and you're still here. I've taken a couple of really, really dumb ones and I'm lucky to be here. Don't have time to go into those stories. But again, shortcuts because nobody was watching on a previous job that I hadn't retired from after years and years and years. Foolish to not follow the safety guidelines that they had sent me to training and tons of tons of hours of training on all different aspects. I took a shortcut and almost ended it. All right, let's talk about the volumes that I wanted to share with you. These are incredible and thank you goes out to all of you. Even our homeowners, they are certainly participating in this as well. This is a 10 year snapshot of our huge, incredible volumes that we have handled on a yearly basis. Look at 2012, 273,000 notifications came in. Nice steady increase for 10 years. Look at what happened in 2019. Very nice, 463 plus. 2020, full blown worldwide pandemic. You, some of you, the professionals, we were deemed a necessary work state. We were still out working, but a lot of were homebound. 550,000 notifications. We said, wow, we didn't think we could surpass 2019, but we blew it out of the water in 2020. Can we ever surpass that? Thanks to all of you, thanks to our state growing exponentially. It is amazing. Look at 2021. We increased by 68,000 notifications. Unbelievable. That is a 12% increase. Now, a big thank you with this next slide. Our 20 to 24 agents could not handle those sheer volumes without your help. Here is a 10 year snapshot of our web submission tickets, our online application. You can see 2012, 53%, a nice gradual steady increase, 2020, 69%, and we still increase from that 3%. Now, Let's equate that to the number. Just under 450,000 notifications were done by all of you online throughout our great state. That is a huge thank you again for supporting the efforts. It's an easy process of, as we have already shared with you today, but these volumes are unbelievable. Our state is growing. Please utilize the tools that you have before you contact us. Here is a snapshot, just the top portion of our website. Bluestakes.org is our address. I wanna point out a few key points on here. Most important part on this entire page, right there at the top, green background, white lettering, submit a ticket, a locate request. Click on that. You, you saw from a previous screenshot, 
you can drop down underneath locate requests and do updates and whatever there. The events such as here today, um, members, all of our members are listed there, our 648 members, resources, the dirt report, a PDF of the excavator's guide is there, FAQ, again, 20 questions. Number six is the uh, locating companies. Contact information is how you would contact our different departments. I'm underneath when you click on that safety training, put in an information, I will follow up with you. That will shoot me an email. You can see just above contact is our social media. We um, have some fun videos and training videos out on our YouTube channel. We have fun with Facebook and Twitter. I frequently do in our busy season, a couple of campaigns a year, um, they go out some gift cards again. So if you embrace that industry effort and like Facebook, um, if you support and share and like and comment, that'll qualify you. You'll, you'll see the campaigns that I'm running. I don't run those until April 1st. April 1st is the National Safe Digging Month. Uh, that's when it starts throughout the country and we embrace and support that industry effort. So I'm running a lot of fun stuff on there. Again, your circle of influence is far greater than ours. We're no rock star and we know that. We don't have millions of followers, but again, our message is important. Please share our message with your circle of influence and hopefully our um, likes will grow. There's our app again for Google or, or uh, Apple. Another uh, interesting fact up here, information, Excavation Safety 101 online training portal. That is additional training that you have the ability to take in addition to this seminar if you need um, Doppel credits or water credits. You go in, you make, set, uh, sign up for an account. It has seven modules. You can take it um, at your leisure. You don't have to take it all at once. It will print out a printed certificate at the end with your license number on it. A lot of companies that are hiring new employees, they're just having them go and take this first off because there's so much good safety information in it. All right, proceeding forward, I love to do safety meetings. I, I travel throughout the state as long as the groups are large enough. The board of directors has uh, suggested that I use my budget effectively and wisely, and so I try to do that. Again, I just spoke about Safe, safe Digging Month. Um, we do banners and you, some of you picked up the banners that were over on my table and I'll show you a picture of those in a little bit. I would encourage you to pick those up and display them. They're a three foot by six foot ban banner. They have grommets all the way around. They're heavy vinyl. They will last a year, maybe a year and a half, two years if we're lucky because we haven't had a lot of harsh weather. Cable tie those up to a chain link fence, screw them up to a wood fence, hook them up to your buildings, high visibility areas, Help us get the word out, safety awareness. Perhaps some of you have seen our billboards. I'll show you a picture of that momentarily, but here coming up is a quick video from my buddy from South Carolina, 811. This will be up on our Facebook page, April 1st. I encourage you to share and comment and like this one. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers or shrubs? Stop, don't dig just yet. You have buried gas, electric and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free. 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. Know what's below. Call 811 before you dig. Steve is a great videographer. He loves doing this kind of stuff. He customizes us to several of the call centers, nonprofit call centers throughout the country a fraction of the cost that we would pay a, a company, professional company, and Steve is very professional. Here's a copy of our billboard, one of our billboards down south, I-15 southbound. We have a total of five of those now. Billboards are extremely expensive. UDOT tells us that millions and millions of people see this on an annual basis. So I've had these billboards up, um, I don't know, for three or four years now, trying to increase my budget. We'll see how that goes. Um, again, as you're traveling north and south on I-15, kind of our main corridor, if you will, throughout our great state, educate your kids as you see this, your grandkids as you're, as you're having fun. UDOT tells us that you've got to be able to read this within about three seconds. Know what's below, call 811 before you dig. Well, whose is that? Well, it's blue stakes. All right, grab your clickers. Here we go. We are right on time and we are in the post-assessment. 
Now I'm gonna blow through these questions really, really quick. So be fast on the draw. Here we go, first question. Let's see if we've got any improvement. The state law requires anyone who is digging to contact Blue Stakes to submit a locate request, true or false? One hundred percent. Thank you. Well done. Next question. What year was Blue Stakes established? Trying to give everybody time enough to, to get their response in so I don't cut you off short. Here we go. Ninety five percent. Well done. You were listening. Nineteen seventy four. Forty eight years. Who can enforce the blue state laws in Utah by pursuing civil penalties? Operator, excavator, attorney general or all of the above. You guys did well on this the first go round, and you did well again, 96%. Damage prevention is a shared responsibility, true or false? Come on, that 1%, help me out. You know the true answer to this. You were messing with me last time. Yeah, I know you were. You are out of the prize drawing. Leave your clicker on the table, see ya. I don't know who you are, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. What are the new blue stake hours? Now you know the correct answer to this. See, we just got 100 on a couple of the previous ones. All right, here we go. Polling is closed. 94%, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, closed Saturday, Sundays, and legal holidays. Submitting an online locate request is available 24 by 7 at bluestakes.org. True or false? There we go, thank you, 100%. Well done. On average, how long does it take to create an online locate request? A, B, C, or D? 97%, correct. One to two minutes. Once you get used to the online app, it is phenomenal, it's very quick. Encourage you to continue to help us push our numbers in the correct direction that we would like to see them go. How soon before digging do you need to to create a locate or a ticket. 12, 24, 36, 48 hours, or two full business days prior to digging. 97% correct. 48 hours or two full business days. What is the life of a locate request? Ninety six percent. D is the correct answer, 14 calendar days. What ticket type extends the life of a locate request? If you need to dig longer than the 14 calendar days, what do you do? To be able to continue digging without any downtime, if you adhere and follow the state law. Polling is closed, and yes, it is 99%. There's that 1%. Okay, it is an update. Private lines will not be marked when you create a locate request, true or false, number one or two. We are right on time too. Thanks very much. Not really, 99%. <laughs> All right, somebody's messing with me. Okay, this is a national statistic. National statistics, if you notify Blue Stakes to have your underground utility lines marked, the chance of damage is less than what percent? 96%, less than 1%, okay. State law question, what is the safety zone or tolerance zone on either side of the marks? Once the paint and flags have gone down out there, what is it? You did really good on this, on the pre. 99%. What's the easiest way for an excavator to check the status of a locate request? You can read through those. I'll close polling before I could read through them. Here we go. Polling is going to close in three, two, one. There, I got them in, okay. 91% of you check electronic positive response. What is the benefit for a facility owner to participate in EPR electronic positive response? Ninety-six percent of you, all of the above. All right, I spoke about the three foot by six foot banners on my table back there. I would love to have those disappear. I have plenty for tomorrow's meeting as well. We're gonna be here with the same um, large group of attendees, so thank you. Please take those. Here are the best practice excavators guide, a picture of it. 
Don't put your clickers away. Remember, we're gonna be doing prize drawings. So remember, click or call 811 before you dig. National 811, trademark there in the center. You know, I truly believe that you, you are the key. Every one of us, we're all the key to reducing damages, to protecting the underground infrastructure, to minimize um, loss of life. We hate that when that happens. We have come full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure to have you here. I have two additional polling questions and then we will get into some prizes. And actually we are about 13 minutes ahead of schedule. I usually go until about 10 minutes after. Here we go. How much practical knowledge did you gain from today's event? A lot, some, a little, or none? No graphs will come up on this. I take this back and learn from it, thank you. Polling is closed. Next question and final question. Overall seminar rating, excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. Just thinking about all the presenters, about the location here, about the exhibitors, about the food, just everything in the one question. Thank you, polling is closed. If you did your pre-registration correctly, some of you were requesting these types of credits. Be patient with us. We need to finish our on-road trips. Ultimately, I will get all of the data from our IT department. I will submit it to our sponsor, the AGC, the Associated General Contractors. They in turn send it to Doppel. Doppel in turn will get your credits. Be patient. It may take two, three months. From what I understand from Doppel, your licenses don't expire till November. So you should all be in good shape. Be patient with us. Again, if you did your pre-registration correctly and filled it all out, you will get your credit. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Hopefully you found your time valuable. Appreciate it. You have a good day.